So ha let's have a look at the US dollar slash the Korean won. First off, read this disclaimer carefully. Then do your good deed of the day by liking and commenting. So 10.5% from the 52 week uh, low and 9% away from the highs. Here are the chart data points using weeklies. Uh, we can see time cycles, but are they still reliable? Yeah, kind of. Be, we are we are part of like a declining phase here. Um, but we've seen a big, big, big rally. So is this a counter trend rally within a downtrend? Um, if we look at some of the previous um, downtrends here, you can see it in this case. We had a counter trend rally here that was sharp. It also did also this one. But this one was almost like a beginning a beginning of a new bull trend. Uh, but yeah, there's been a big shift. So support at the blue 100 week moving average, big, 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 big rally on the dailies. Getting into resistance, blue 100 day and red 200 daily moving average. Um, we are not at overbought levels yet on the weeklies. Um, on the dailies, however, we are very overbought. Uh, if you look here at the history of our RSI, okay, let's do it like this and like this and like this. You can see that going way back here, uh, down, yeah, we can go back to 2013. This RSI level is extremely rare. It usually results in pullback. So short term, short term, definitively a reason to expect a pullback. Long term, it's uh, still very undecided. However, uh, you could certainly make the case uh, that um, we are part of a declining time cycle. As such, uh, the long term picture could be a bit uh, bearish. I'm having this major issue with my bath. It's like uh, even if I turn turn off the light on my Razer Basilisk, it still comes uh, back to life. And I turn off the lights, you know, because I want to preserve the battery, but yeah, really annoying. Okay, let's continue. And by the way, having good gear is very important uh, if you are into trading, because uh, you need that accuracy. Especially if you have a trade that you regret and you want to very quickly exit it than having a computer mouse uh, that's very accurate uh, versus having one that's uh, more slow. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, it will pay for itself. Okay, here is the seasonality bearish. Okay, that's interesting. So bearish into mid-March, looking at February, very strong. But the 7.35% gain for February is the second biggest gain going back to 2004. Um, looking at March, it, it recently it's been bullish, but looking you know, between yeah, 2004 and 2018, it was way more messy. And when you look here at the sum, uh, March is uh, the second weakest month. Yeah, April is also weak. So this corroborates the idea that uh, we are likely to see some pullback here on this pair, which means that the US dollar would weaken against the Korean won. When it comes to fundamentals, I have a separate tool that I use that it I can't really share it because it's there are all kinds of like rules around the license, but I will give of course the score and based on the data I will give minus three. Okay, minus minus three three. Okay. Here is relative performance uh, long term with weekly data points minus eight percent negative with S P five hundred minus seventy six percent with E W I which is the South Korea stock market ETF. And the spy of course reflects it's a benchmark of the stock market in America. Um, so in this case, both are negative. Uh, the sharp negative correlation with EWI means that when the US dollar strengthens, it usually is very negative 
for the Korean stock market. And also the opposite is the case. And there's a 76% positive correlation with the uh, with this currency pair and the 10-year yield with the daily data points, which is the shorter term uh, uh, horizon, uh, minus 59% with S&P 500, minus 91% with EWI, and 33% with the 10-year yield. So let's look at EWI. This is the South Korea stock market ETF. So there was an inverse correlation here. In this case, we have seen a big pullback on EWI. It's back at horizontal support, long-term support. If you look here at RSI, not there yet on the weeklies or at the PPO for that matter. On the daily data points, approaching a very viable level. The 20-day PPO in purple is actually at support. And we are at support here on the dailies with the red 200-day moving average. Resistance here, but it is now support. This is very, very interesting because there was a negative correlation, which means that now that EWI is at support, it's a place where bulls are likely to buy. If that means that the South Korean stock market ETF goes up, it means that that could further increase the probability that the US dollar will weaken against the South Korean won. So yeah, it, it, when you get into like the Forex market with the pairs and, and all of that, it can be a bit you know, uh, something to wrap your head around, but eventually you will uh, get it. Like that. Uh, so now I am comparing US dollar, Korean won against the ETF. Um, there seems to be time cycles, but um, how reliable are they? These are pretty nice time cycles, I must say. And they go way back, uh, way back. Um, okay, so we are part of a declining phase that extends into early 2024, which means that we are in a period where the current pair is expected to weaken against the Korean, South Korean stock market. Looking at the daily, so we are uh, close to overbought levels here, which further corroborates the idea that we could get a bit of a pullback. Here is the seasonality. Um, the pair is expected to weaken into mid-March. Looking at February, this is the second strongest outperformance we have seen since 2004, which means that we have a bullish anomaly. The previous time we had massive outperformance, March, April, and May were very weak. Uh, in 2011, 11.44% outperformance, very bullish, but then March and April, very weak. Uh, 2018, very bullish, but guess what? March was weak. Because of that, because of the, the data, real data we have in front of us, there's very good reason to turn a bit bearish here. You're looking at the sums, the sums for March and April are very bearish. So yeah, this substantially um, strengthens uh, the bearish case. So minus seven here on relative performance. We end up with minus 5.3 in favor of the bears. The entry signal is that we are overbought. So it's bearish across the board. There's a reason to expect the US dollar to weaken against the Korean won. There is, of course, always a big caveat, especially in the Forex market where very big and classified news um, that are currently about to go live that we don't know of because it's classified. Um, they can, of course, have a big effect on all the analysis that I just did. Korea, of course, is in Asia. Um, China is considering uh, whether or not it's going to get involved in the conflict around, regarding the bear in Europe. Um, if China were to make that decision, because China is in a bit of a messy... Uh, messy position because China understands fully that they are not considered as um, a liberal democracy by uh, America and NATO. 
obviously that's not a big surprise but I don't, that also means that when China looks at the, what's happening with the big bear and all the resources that are going into uh, destroying the big bear China is thinking to itself as you know, the big panda is that okay yeah are we next yeah is there pl are there plans of regime change in China likely it wouldn't shock me um because of that if China were to really get involved the conflict would really be big really 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 big that kind of vol volatility uh, would very be very much create chaos in the forex market so yeah that's definitively something to keep on our radar uh, the decision will be made relatively soon um, it will be huge um, regardless really of what happens because if China does not do it then uh, um, there are other ways the conflict could escalate which also would be very very like introduce a lot of volatility because if the big bear does not get those kinds of weapons uh, come from China then it has its own that are of course uh, way more destructive but uh, the threshold for using them is I mean it would be we would be a very big uh, game changer if those were used but yeah it's it's a quite a situation uh, in the world of markets okay on the topic of that, let's look at the Chinese stock market, FXI. Let's make sure I'm looking at the FXI like that. Yeah, pulled back. Um, looking at the dailies. Yeah, the blue 100 day moving average. Interesting place to buy. It was um, support back here. Uh, it's been solid as a resistance uh, level, as you can see, very easy to short. Let's look at the seasonality. Uh, bullish on the left, on the right. Uh, February is the, uh, this is the worst February, February uh, going back to 2005. On a contrarian angle, that could be bullish for much. Okay, um, okay, so let's look at some other securities then. Um, yeah, let's let's stay in Asia. Let's look at Japan. Yeah, pulled back. And we do have this inverse head and shoulders, shoulder, head and shoulder. It is bullish, but that doesn't mean it must go up. Um, it, uh, if you look back here, like there was an inverse head and shoulders pattern, shoulder, head and shoulder, then we form another shoulder, another shoulder, and then we do have that rally. So uh, there are two players in the market, the bulls and uh, the bears. Uh, you just must uh, appreciate uh, the gravity of that fact. Yeah, because you can look at this and see an inverse head and shoulders pattern as a bull, but the bears, they absolutely want to destroy this because they do not want uh, inverse thin shoulders to work because that will not be good for a bear. And they will do everything to undermine that pattern. So let's say, say that hypothetically we were to see something like this. Uh, that could really undermine that pattern if, even if we do get a rally because then you would have a situation where we go below these support levels um, and that um, really tests uh, the confidence of the bulls and if they begin to falter uh, then the bears really can become a bit more ambitious yeah february it's been weak so far but previous times uh, february uh, was weak at least recently uh, the following month was also weak so yeah, we have looked at uh, the currency pair and also looked at some other stuff that's very relevant. All in all, I do think that uh, this is a very interesting time to be involved in the stock market. Uh, but uh, it's also a time where there are many events that could disrupt uh, completely any kind of analysis you do that does not take into account that 
and the undisclosed news, because obviously that's very difficult to take into account. Uh, but in those market conditions, uh, you just have to be more nimble. Um, because a big surprise is not a big problem if you have a diversified market neutral portfolio. It certainly is a problem if you don't. And that's why I'm an advocate of having bullish and bearish positions in all markets, because one thing you get a lot of train training in how to identify those kinds of opportunities and also to trade them. Another thing, of course, is that it makes it easier to see the opposite side of the current trade. So let's say that you have a bullish trade on. Given that you have a habit of also thinking of bearish opportunities, you can look at that bullish um, setup from a bearish perspective. And if you then see no bearish opportunities, that's of course good. But let's say there's a bit of a shift where oh, this could actually become a more bearish opportunity. In that case, uh, you know that there could be you know, bears out there building positions, which in then, then further on down, down the line could really have an effect on your bullish, bullish position. So yeah, the market is very dynamic and uh, the more, the bigger picture you can see, the less you will be uh, surpri surprised. And the easier it will be, of course, to be a longer term participant in the market.